Hello everyone, welcome to From the Star Wars Home Video Library. I'm your host, Nathan B. Butler. This time we take a look back at something we've seen some bits of before from the UK, but in doing so this time we will basically finish out a little collecting corner of my Star Wars Home Video Library thanks to Ricky Ray. Ricky, of course, is someone who helped in the past to acquire different things from the UK. Uh, he is from Scotland, and the first thing actually that he submitted as a gift to my collection for focus here on the show was this. The VHS release of Revenge of the Sith from the UK. It is full screen because you had a pattern start, including in the US around 2002 with Attack of the Clones, where VHS releases stopped being in pairs of full screen and widescreen. Instead, it was just full screen that was available. And that continued onward so that even though the US didn't get a VHS release of Revenge of the Sith at all, when the UK did, theirs was also just full screen, continuing the pattern set up by Attack of the Clones. We looked at this fairly early on in the series, looked at it in depth, and a little note there from Ricky, we looked at how the label was basically just the art from the cover there, uh, with the rating, with a not-for-rental notice in yellow above the symbol for the episode. We also recently took a look at The Phantom Menace on VHS from the UK, and we looked at the widescreen version. We noted that it was a little bit different than in the US, where the only widescreen version you could get on VHS was in that special widescreen collector's edition. We took a look at it, saw the Jedi there on the side, compared that to the US packaging and so forth, and noted that the label was different, and that it's just sort of the logo for the film with widescreen above it without having the actual art from the front on it. We looked at this fairly recently. Well, Ricky noticed that in having those two, that basically really meant there were only, as far as we know, two different VHS releases of the prequels from the UK that I didn't have in the collection and therefore hadn't been able to show on the show or perhaps eventually show in a second edition of A Saga on Home Video. And it turns out that he had access to both of them and sent them over as a gift, surprising the heck out of me, to add to the collection and feature on the show. So, thank you, Ricky, first of all, but let's take a look at them. So... I said 2002 is when you had to go full screen, and that was the only option on VHS, which means, by definition, that it must have been before that when you could get widescreen or full screen, and we'd only seen widescreen for Phantom Menace. One of the items he sent over, this is the full screen version of the Phantom Menace from the UK from 2000. Notice here, the cover looks a lot like the US version, but it's a clamshell case instead of a cardboard slip cover, so you do only have the one spine. Whereas this one chose to use the spine for Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon, this one uses the spine just of Maul, very much like the way the clamshell worked at Toys R Us in the U.S., which is the only place to get a clamshell for Phantom Menace on VHS. It was an exclusive uh, to Toys R Us when you did a pre-order there, and it had a lenticular cover that these do not have. So it looks a lot like the U.S. version. Star Wars 1, Phantom Menace, the Maul lies behind it. You have your main image there. It looks a lot like the U.S. full-screen main image. Uh, we've got our rating down here. THX information along the bottom, as one would expect. Our spine here, 20th Century Fox Home Entertainment, Star Wars 1, The Phantom Menace, there's Maul, there's a rating, THX, Lucasfilm, and product number. The back looks a lot like the U.S. back as well. Uh, biggest difference between that one and the widescreen back is the lack of the widescreen up at the top, and the fact that this one has a little notice about how it's been modified to fit your screen. Notice here, by the way, when you compare these two, the image is different of the characters, just like in the U.S., to denote full screen or widescreen. The widescreen one goes across. The full screen one is just the regular rectangle here. When we open it, we will find that the logo is still prominently featured, just with no widescreen above it, along with your rating and legalese. In this case, you'll also find that on the sides, for this and the other one we're going to look at, you got these little holograms of the 20th Century Fox logo to denote that they are legit. Also in this, though, there is a little pamphlet kind of thing here. It says, check inside for cool Star Wars offers. And when you open it up, it's basically advertisements for various Star Wars products from their UK distributors, whoever that might have been at the time. But then, of course, came 2002 and Attack of the Clones, and that's where the pattern of widescreen and full screen was broken, so we only have a full screen of Attack of the Clones to show for the UK, just like for the US. And its contents, its exclusive bits, and quasi-exclusive bits, also the same as well. Here's Attack of the Clones, again, that cool gold clamshell case, which we saw for Phantom Menace, but which will be white in the case of Revenge of the Sith. So we have Star Wars 2, Attack of the Clones, 
rectangular image there, rating, THX info, the little sticker says, special edition VHS includes exclusive deleted scenes. Exclusive to the 2002 releases, but they and even more deleted scenes were all on the DVDs. Star Wars Connections featurette, R2-D2 and C-3PO explain the story of the Star Wars saga. That's actually exclusive, but doesn't say so. It was not only only in 2002, but only on the VHS releases, nowhere to be found on DVD. That's why you might still want to have a VHS copy at some point. Okay, so there's your cover. Spine, very similar. 2065's Home Entertainment, Star Wars 2, Attack of the Clones, Anakin there. Rating, THX, Lucasfilm, and product number. Similar back to the U.S. in most respects, the saga continues. UPC, images from the film, description, cast crew information, rating in the corner. What I find interesting is it's got an explanation of the rating that we don't often see. So, for instance, it says PG, parental guidance, over in this corner. General viewing, but some scenes may be unsuitable for young children. Yeah, the I hate sand, children should never be exposed to acting that bad. So, definitely, parents be advised. But then on the other corner, with the color coding there, it tells us specifics. Language! None. Doesn't mean they don't speak. What it means is nobody's dropping F-bombs, although there are plenty of times I'm sure Anakin is thinking, oh, for F's sake, whenever Padme does certain things. Uh, sex slash nudity, also none, much to Anakin's disappointment. Violence, some, comma, sci-fi action. So, is there violence? Some, sci-fi action. I guess you're meant to put that pause in there, because it's not some sci-fi action, it's some, comma, sci-fi action. And then other, mild fantasy peril. Now, that's mild peril in a fantastic fantasy-esque sci-fi fantasy setting. That does not mean uh, that it's just the peril you would have from having a mild fantasy about peril. That is kind of a different thing. Uh, ask your psychologist or psychiatrist for more information. Inside, you'll find that the label, there was sort of that question, well, what's the label going to look like? Is it going to be the art from the cover, just like Revenge of the Sith? Is it going to have a label about not for rental, like Revenge of the Sith? Is it going to be just the logo of the title with the, you know, the Star Wars with the number behind it, like we saw with Phantom Menace? Which is it? It's right in the middle. Turns out, it is essentially the same approach that was taken to Revenge of the Sith, so it's the art from the cover, except no notification about not for rental on this one. As for the spine, again, just that little hologram there to let you know that it's legit, along with the printed information letting you know when it was produced. So again, if you were in the UK, you could have watched the full screen version of The Phantom Menace in 2000. You could have watched a widescreen version of The Phantom Menace in 2000 as well. In 2002, your only VHS option for Attack of the Clones, far as we know, was full screen, which was this. And at least it's got the connections thing on it. And then in 2005, once the US no longer had VHS releases for Star Wars being produced, the UK still had them, albeit in full screen, which is how you could get The Phantom Menace. So at least in the UK, even if you can't have a full widescreen set of the prequel trilogy on VHS, you can at least have a full set of the prequel trilogy in the UK on VHS. You just have to deal with the fact that it's full screen, unfortunately. With that, we'll wrap up this episode. Thank you for watching, and may the Force be with the home video viewers.